don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So it's time to do another Heroes and Heroines page for March. So today's page is going to be one of my all-time design icons and heroes. So let me turn over to my overhead camera and I'll show you who it is. So this is my Heroes and Heroines journal, obviously. <laughs> so I've marked out my next page and my hero for, well, the first hero for March is William Morris, who was born on the 24th of March, just a couple of days ago. Um, so yes, one of my all time design heroes. So some of the patterns that he created are for fabrics and wallpapers. I've still got on my walls today. <laughs> um, in fact, I've got in one of the back bedrooms, um, this wallpaper, which is the Pimpernel pattern uh, in the brick and olive colours. So I'm going to incorporate my two favourite patterns from William in this page. So I'm going to do it on this side because we're going to work, obviously I'm working front to back um, in no particular order. So the next page I do will go on this one, which will be my female heroine for March. I know we're fast approaching the end of the month, but I will try and squeeze it in before we get to the end of the month. So, my background pattern is my all-time favourite William Morris design, which is the Strawberry Thief. And this is in the indigo colour. So this is the blue colour. Um, also available in a reddish colour as well as a brownish slaty colour as well. But I love the blue one. Um, and I do have my favourite um, duvet cover is this exact pattern. <laughs> in fact, Ian is downstairs as we speak, ironing it to go back on the bed. <laughs> I've always loved this pattern. It's always been one of my favorites. So it seemed fitting that I use this one as the background for the page. So I've just gone around that with a little bit of uh, distressing uh, and I'm going to use some spirit glue Let's make sure that the hole's not blocked up and we'll just whiz some of that round so yes William Morris born in Walthamstow in London's East End in 1834 so yeah proper East Ender you wouldn't have thought it would you um, was a designer, an artist, a poet, a writer, and a social reformer. Being born um, in the East End, he would have definitely seen the poverty um, that was in um, London at that time. And you've got to put it into context. He was born in 1834, so, and he was living in the East End of London. Um, around about or, or was very aware of what was going on in London at that time. Um, putting it into historical context, um, Jack the Ripper was stalking the streets of London in 1888 or 1887 to 1889, so over that kind of period. So William Morris would have been there, would have been reading about Jack the Ripper in the newspapers um, as it happened. So putting that into historical context, there you go. Um, he would have been around about 50 years old, um, around about the time, 50, 52 years, when Jack the Ripper was at his height, if you like, uh, 1888, when he was really in the newspaper and literally he was, um, all people were talking about, Jack the Ripper at his, not William Morris, um, around about that time. So, and I don't suppose, I don't think anyway, that he was ever kind of suspected of being Jack the Ripper, not like some uh, other notable characters of the time were. Um, right, okay, so this, like I said, is the Pimpernel pan, my second favourite uh, of all time. So that's going to go down as a panel on the inside. So I've got both of my favourite patterns going down on that page. 
So yes, as I was saying, um, so yes, yeah, so he would have been kicking around about that time. Um, he didn't die, or he died in 1896. So, um, so he actually died before Queen Victoria, because <laughs> Queen Victoria didn't die until um, a little bit later, or just a few years after. So he actually died before Queen Victoria, which is sad, which is very, very sad. Okay, so the next piece that I'm putting down in my collage is one of the prints for the inner pages of one of the books that he wrote. Um, now, as well as being a designer and a poet and all that kind of stuff, um, he was also a medievalist. So he loved kind of like the old, old time stories um, about like King Arthur and all that kind of stuff, that kind of Arthurian myth. Um, but also wrote his own kind of um, fantasy back in the day. So almost, if you like, um, like Tolkien, but they never really caught on as much as Tolkien's did. Um, so this is one of those um, illustrations from one of his books called The Well at the World's End. So this is just absolutely stunning, beautiful leaves with all that kind of foliage inside it. And there's obviously the, the, the lovers meeting in the wood and it says friends in need meet in the wild wood. Isn't that beautiful? It's worthwhile exploring some of those illustrations, not done by him, um, done by different artists, but these were in his books. These are what he wanted, the type of Chaucerian kind of illustrations that he wanted inside his books. Right, so now it's time to stick down our beautiful photograph of William. So William's wife, Jane, was also an artist herself. She was um, very much his muse. Um, but she was known for her embroidery work. Um, Morris was a, a big proponent of hand craft, well, arts and crafts. So at the time, the Industrial Revolution was kicking out mass produced goods, and he was one of the leaders in the arts and crafts movement that kind of kicked against that, um, a more of a return, if you like, to handmade goods. Um, and crafts a bit like what we're doing today um, most of us would rather have something handmade than mass-produced um, just look at Etsy for that um, and at the time he was obviously one of those proponents of handcraft hand crafts a return back to a, a more um, craft kind of aesthetic a simpler time um, rather than the high Victorian Gothic, um, more of a simpler kind of design, I think more um, led by kind of natural themes, plants and the natural world, which is why all of his patterns um, are all of the natural world. So again, this is another one of those illustrations from one of the books, which I just think is beautiful. It's just of a, a, a girl um, walking through like a meadow if you like but it's again it's surrounded by those beautiful kind of borders and illustrations they're absolutely stunning absolutely beautiful definitely well worth investigating if you can so he wrote a couple of books um again i can't remember the name of the other one very similar title to the well at the world's end um but i can't remember off the top of my head at the moment so that's going in there um and then i've got a, a a fantastic quote um, from one of his poems. Thine eyes were light, thy lips were life. How beautiful is that? Very romantic. It's just the sort of thing that you'd, uh, you'd want somebody to say to you, wouldn't you? Thine eyes were light. <laughs> fantastic stuff. It's a great quote. Thy lips were life. Mm -mm. Yum yum. <laughs> so I'm going to put that in there, just so it's breaking across those corners. 
but just before I stick that down, um, so as I was saying, so William Morris was a social reformer. He could see all around him the poverty that people were having to endure, um, children working in factories, all that kind of stuff, uh, and was very, very much um, in favour of women's rights, um, women's struggle for the vote and all that kind of stuff, um, and believed that freedom um, was something which everybody should have, not just the rich. Um, very, very much a proponent of that. So, a member of the Democratic Federation, there you go. Um, people think socialism is like communism. It's not. It's very, very different. Socialism is um, a lot different. And social reform is definitely something we could all get behind. Right, okay, so that's going in there and then I just need to add in my little block with his date of birth on. So as I was saying about his wife, yes, so Jane um, was um, very well known for her embroidery um, and also for her, um, she was his muse, but he also had two children as well, um, Mary and Jenny, who's also called Jane, Jenny Jane, um, depending on where you go to. Um, but Jenny developed epilepsy at the age of 15. Um, but it didn't stop her. <laughs> it certainly didn't back in the day, because obviously there wasn't the, the kind of drugs and pharmaceuticals that we have now to help people cope with epilepsy. Um, but there you go. So there is my William Morris inspired hero page for March 2020. So I hope you enjoyed watching me put this collage page together. If you have, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share the video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I will try and squeeze in my heroine for March before the end of the month. That's all from me. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. Thank you.